So you're probably going to laugh at how stupid simple this is going to be, but I need an easy win after spending the last, I don't, I don't even know how many months working on that high boy. So this is going to be pretty awesome. <laughs> so I have these offcuts here just from the firewood pile. These were some milling offcuts from earlier last year. These are elm and they have a lot of really cool burl kind of stuff going on in them. So this one has a lot more burls in it than the other one has and they're actually showing up on the surface a lot more than this one but this one still does have some telegraphing through into the face on this side but I think they're both going to have a pretty interesting look to them. So since these were firewood I wasn't actually drying these for lumber or anything they probably weren't dry totally when I brought them in for firewood. So this is also a piece of elm it's totally dry or it's as dry as it's going to get it's at equilibrium with the indoor environment here. So ideally I want my stock for these little boards to be at the same moisture content as the knowns. So this is, this is reading about eight and a half. And this one here is reading about the same, about eight and a half, 8.4. And then the bigger one is reading at 11. So the big one still needs to sit around and dry for a while. So I make that process a little bit faster. I'm going to rough mills down to size so I get rid of some of the thickness which should help it to lose some moisture a little bit quicker. So I'm just gonna run these over the jointer to flatten out the face that was the cut side from the mill and then run the other side for the planer to flatten that side out as well. So these are gonna look really cool I think. I'll put a little bit of mineral spirits on here to kind of look at the color a little bit and I think it's gonna be just pretty awesome. There's a lot of these little eyes coming through here so I think these are gonna look just awesome when they're done. So I do have some checking on the ends here that I do want to kind of address. I could just cut them shorter, but I do like the lengths that they're at right now. So what I'm going to do is stabilize these with some epoxy. And before I do that, I want to clean up the ends a little bit. So I have a much cleaner surface for some masking tape to adhere to so I can contain the epoxy when I pour it into those cracks on the ends. So I'm just going to trim those back real quick. I'm going to try and keep the same angles that are on the ends right now. I like the odd angles on the ends. I think it adds a kind of a fun appeal. So these boards have been sitting out here for a few weeks now and this guy has come down quite a bit in moisture so it's ready to kind of move forward. And of course in the meantime I also found uh, this piece of walnut that I think will also make a pretty cool serving board uh, instead of just getting burned. So pretty much the same thing as last time, I'll flatten them over the jointer and then bring them down to the final thickness to the planer. Now I really like the thickness on the smaller one right now, so I think I'm going to target a final thickness of around 7 eighths of an inch. It has a kind of light and more delicate look to it, which I think is going to look pretty nice. So I went to clean up the end grain on the elm ones again just to clean up that epoxy and just kind of touch things up a little bit. And of course I still have to do that here on this walnut piece. But on this walnut there's something interesting here that I thought I'd point out. So I get a lot of questions about sealing end grain of logs and this is a good example that has actually both sealed and unsealed in it. On this end this was the end of the log before I was cut off and this was sealed with anchor seal and there are actually there's no checking at all on the ends here. On this side, this was not sealed, this was the side that was towards the rest of the log and so it's cut up into different firewood lengths to get the, the waste kind of cut up and put on the firewood rack. And this side does have a pretty good amount of checks. Nothing too crazy, but just kind of a cool example I thought I could share to see the difference between sealed and unsealed.
So one thing I want to add to these is a little under bevel on here so it's easier to actually get your fingers under here and pick it up. But I don't want it to be a sharp edge. I want to have a little bit of a flat spot and then have the bevel start. So I have an example here. I just ran this test to kind of get an idea. So you have a, I don't know what that is, like about a quarter inch of a flat area and then there's a bevel there on the bottom. So when you go to pick it up, your fingers actually can get underneath it and it makes it really easy to pick up that board. So I have the blade tipped to some arbitrary number that I thought looked good and it happens to be 25 degrees. So I'm not gonna run these things over the blade and knock off that bottom corner and make that little recess there for your fingers to grab. On the walnut board, I can't really decide which side I like the best to be the show side. So I'm gonna try and make this thing reversible or two-sided by putting a bevel on both sides. So the last major thing that has to happen is some kind of cleanup work on the live edges. On the walnut, I think I'm gonna do a similar edge treatment to the edge treatment I did on the bed I made for my son last year where I remove the outer bark and then leave the inner bark. So I'll use a draw knife to remove the outer bark, but I'm gonna do something a little differently this time. On the bed, I use an angle grinder with a scotch brite pad to kind of blend the facets from the draw knife together. On this one, I think I'm gonna leave the tool marks and just give it a light sand just to kind of smooth things out a little bit. So on these elm ones, the live edge comes to a pretty sharp point here, which is it's gonna be pretty sharp and pretty fragile too. So I want to knock this back. So I got a couple passes right on the edge with a spoke shave just to kind of clean that up a little bit and to keep it from fracturing in the future. So that just basically puts a little bit of a flat on there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just clean up the live edge section here with some sandpaper. That's nice. So I'll give these things a quick finish sanding and now they're ready for some finish. I'm pretty excited about this. This should be pretty awesome. So with the finished carrot, I'll give the boards a light sanding with 600 grit sandpaper to knock down any roughness or any little dust nibs that might have settled in the finish while it was curing. And then the guys over at SoCal Woodshop sent me this board wax a few months ago and I've been wanting to try it for a while. I'll buff it on and that'll give the boards a bit of a surface film and also help to even out the sheen. So I am really happy with the way that these things turned out. I think the under bevel on the end really does it. It gives it a really cool light look and it's also very functional to make it really easy to pick these things up. Now I kind of wish I didn't put the double bevel on the walnut, make it reversible. It's just not, there's just not enough room in there to get your fingers underneath. So that's kind of unfortunate, I guess, but it still works and it is reversible. So I guess that's kind of cool in itself. But this is like a really great way to get rid of these uh, scraps and offcuts. So if you're milling your own lumber or you're cutting logs, you know you have like, I know you have a lot of these things lying around. You have like a whole pile of those first cuts to make that log into a cant just laying there. 
and yeah, you're probably cutting up for firewood or you can't get rid of them fast enough, so this could be a good way to you know, make some little gifts or some things to sell with those offcuts. If you don't have your own logs you're cutting up, find someone who does because they'll probably be happy if you come by and take a few of these off their hands. And they've got, you can go, go by and get a, uh, a piece from an eight foot long log and they'll give you like six of these. If you do that now, by the time the holidays come next year, that piece of wood will be dry and you'll have not enough stock to make a whole bunch of gifts for somebody. And I think these are just really, really cool. I'm having a problem now because I have a bunch of these that were in the firewood pile and I've been bringing them in to burn and I'm having a hard time throwing them in the fire now. So I have a whole stack of these that are probably becoming uh, more of these boards in the near future. So I hope you enjoyed this quick project. These were a lot of fun to make and it's just fun to make something that's pretty quick and really beautiful and really functional. But uh, I got to head back in because I stole this platter from in the house after I loaded it up with all the stuff. And I'm sure Lindsay's kind of wondering where, well, where the wine went and where this thing went. <laughs> so I'm going to go enjoy this and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you as always for watching. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.